do a hymn this morning, but if you close your eyes, I'd like to read to you Psalm 24. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof, the world and they that dwell therein. For he has founded it upon the seas and established it upon the floods. Who shall ascend into the hill of the Lord? Who shall stand in his holy place? He that has clean hands and a pure heart, who hath not lifted up his soul unto vanity, nor sworn deceit, he shall be blessed from the Lord, righteousness from the God of his salvation. This is the generation of them that seek him, that seek thy face, O Jacob. Lift up your heads, O ye gates, be ye lifted up into everlasting doors, and the King of glory shall come in. Who is this King of glory? The Lord strong and mighty the Lord mighty in battle. Lift up your head, O ye gates, even lift them up, ye everlasting doors, and the King of glory shall come in. Who is this King of glory? The Lord of hosts. He is the King of glory. Looking today at the virtue endurance. And like all these virtues, I am wonderfully surprised at the variance and difference. You could think of endurance as patience, and you'd be right. And yet there's something unique about endurance that patience doesn't capture. Ned Phillips was, is, an, is addicted to endurance sports. If I say endurance sports, he, most of us here would know what an endurance sport is. Yeah. I think in Australia we call it the Ironman. In England, they might swim 12 miles, then they might ride a bicycle for 100 miles, and then they'll finish the day with around a 30 or 40 mile run. Endurance sports. Ned works for uh, technology, and in his younger years, he was in the office, and one of his fellow peers stood up and suddenly announced, I'm going to do a 100-mile run. Who's doing it with me? Well, none of the hands shot up. But Ned sat there, sat there and said to himself, I want to do this. And then his colleague looked over at Ned and said, Ned? And he goes, yes, I'll do it with you. So they began to train, began to prepare, and it took 18 hours to run 100 kilometers. What do you eat when you're on the run? What kind of backpack do you take? How are you going to rehydrate yourself on the road? There's all these things they had to plan for. Well, the short story is they did the run, he pushed himself, and he really enjoyed it. He became addicted. Eventually, he ended up in Singapore, living in Singapore, and working for a company, and he decided, I'm going to run around the country. And he measured it with a bit of string on a map. Yeah, that's almost 100 miles. Ended up being 125 miles. He thought, I'm going to do this. So he had family and friends support him, meeting him at different points along the way. He tried to run as much along the coast to make it enjoyable. But he discovered something. He said, well, he thought, well I've done 100 miles before. I can do it again. And when he got to 100 miles, something changed. Something in him wanted to stop. And then he said, I'll just take the next step. And he continued that, that same thought process, I'll just see what happens, I'll take one more step. And he found that his mind ran the last 25 miles for him. He said, my body ran 100 miles, and then my mind took over. <coughs> and ran the last 25 miles. Endurance. It has a lot more to do with this and a lot less to do with the body. Let's begin. On the front of the order of service, endurance is a virtue closely related to faith and determination. It's related. You could say that
could say that faith and determination are some of the building blocks that eventually lead to endurance, but they're not the same thing. When you have this virtue, you are gifted with the mental, spiritual, and physical stamina to see a project, vision, or individual decision through to its completion. Endurance gives you the ability to confront hardship and difficulties while still staying the course. It affords one the ammunition against hopeless and negative feelings by opening opportunities to learn life lessons from life obstacles. The richest relationships can only come from time and patience coupled with commitment. And this virtue sustains us through a multitude of negative human qualities. We've all got qualities that irritate our partner. And our partner has qualities that irritate us. Or it could be mum, dad, your brother, your sister, something that you love about them but you equally hate. Those kind of qualities that endurance carries you through. In the end, our character is deepened and enhanced by the practice of endurance. I think it's fair to say... Every one of us here today in this room have got here because of endurance. You've got to where you are today because of endurance. Just think about how many things you go through in one day that require some form of endurance. Right? Maybe you're just so used to doing it, you do it. Well, what else might improve in your life if you were to allow this virtue to dictate in that area of your life? Where somewhere, think about somewhere where maybe you lack endurance how this virtue could come in and help you. Darren, would you mind reading for us the definition? <clears throat> I just did that then, in my own words. <laughs> good, you caught me there, that was good. Definition. The ability to withstand hardship or adversity, especially the ability to sustain a prolonged, stressful, comfortable activity, the ability to undergo an unpleasantly difficult process of situation. That's a dictionary definition. But I want to sort of stretch us a little bit here today and say endurance, the kind of endurance God wants from us, is actually not really about suffering and hardship. The, de the dictionary defines endurance as being able to go through hardship. And the Lord says, Come to me, all ye that labour and are heavy laden, and I'll give you rest. Matthew eleven twenty eight. He goes on to say, take my yoke upon you and learn from me. He says, you will find rest for your souls, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. How many of us are carrying a heavy burden? We're enduring under something that maybe we're not supposed to be enduring under. Think about that. You know, God's not, didn't create us for sickness. God didn't create us for suffering. God didn't create us for hardship in that way. If he did, heaven would be like that, wouldn't it? Wouldn't it? And yet there is a burden the Lord does want us to endure. Some ideas, some thoughts on what kind of... Come on in. Some ideas or thoughts on what kind of burdens the Lord does want us to endure. Darren, an idea of a burden? Yeah, I'm looking at you because you're thinking I can see it on your face. Um, I think endurance can be the endurance to get out of our own way. The endurance to get out of our own way. Uh, to put up our stumbling blocks. Welcome. Put up our stumbling blocks about the way we can be seen as external stumbling blocks. Yes. Out of our own way. That's amazing. We're just looking at the dictionary definition of endurance. We just looked at it and it really emphasized the word hardship. And we're sort of looking at this idea that God hasn't really called us for hardship. Not really. It's when we don't get out of our own way, Darren, isn't it, that we end up enduring the wrong kind of things. Yeah, to get out of your own way. When you're there. When you're there. <laughs> to get out of your own way. It's just not going to happen. Yeah. It's not going to happen. No, that, that was Webster. I think that was a Webster. So what, what's another burden that the Lord would ask us to carry? Some suggestions? 
Remember, his burdens are light and easy. Ten Commandments, I like that. That's good. How about the burden of each other? <laughs> now, when someone's really troubled and you and you out of love, you come and support them. Isn't it? That really is the burden I believe the Lord wants us to have because that's the burden of heaven, isn't it? Heaven is a place where people are truly in love with each other and carry each other's burden. And it's not a heavy burden. It's a light burden. Okay, let's have a look at the synonyms. I like the synonyms here because they actually bring out more of the positive side of endurance. And endurance is actually a very positive virtue. Synonym. Would Catherine, would you, uh, Christina, would you mind reading? You don't have to. You've got your glasses. Just the synonyms there. Metal. Mm. Metal. Metal. Patience. Perseverance. Persistence. Stamina. Strength. Tenacity. Tolerance. Vitality. Are any of those negative? Are any of those hardship? No, they're not really, are they? They're good virtues, though, aren't they? They're good synonyms to bring out the quality of endurance. What's one that really stood out for you? Ian, something that really... Which one? Grit. Ooh, grit. Grit. That's a good word, isn't it? True grit. You can relate to all of them? Yeah, absolutely. Wow. In the military, you learn how to endure. That's very true, yes. What about vitality? Isn't that a good synonym for endurance? Doesn't that change the flavor of endurance? I so much want to talk about patience right now, but we'll do that when we get to that virtue later on. Like I said, they're very, very close, and they often use the same word in the Greek New Testament. Hypo, for under, and meno, for to abide. So it's abiding under a weight. But I like to think of it as when you're under a weight, abide in God. When you're under a weight, abide in God. And you'll carry it. You'll carry it, whatever that, that weight is. So, would you... Oh, actually, no, I'll get... It's, it's Peter. No. Oh, Trevor. Trevor, your card was out there, Trevor. Jerry, Jerry Trevor, yeah, your card was out there, Trevor. Trevor, would you write, read for us antonyms, the opposites of endurance? Fascinating, this, by the way, the opposites. Cessation. Flow. Discontinuous, discontinuity, end, ending, expiration, finish, stoppage. Surcease? Is that how you'd say it, Gay? Surcease, yes. Termination. Now, what stands out to people here today about those those antonyms? Expiration. Like you've run out of breath? You have to come next month. We're going to do enthusiasm. Breath. Breath. Inner breath. It's all an ending, isn't it? Every one of these is some form of end. Doesn't that change the flavor of endurance now? Endurance is about not ending. What happens to water when it doesn't flow anymore? It stagnates, doesn't it? And all sorts of things grow and pond in the water when it stagnates. But when the water can flow like a spring, you can drink it. Scoop that off the top, get that cold, delicious water. It's fresh, it's clean. But as soon as it stagnates, as soon as it's still, it stagnates. So endurance has a quality of life to it. Living, something living. Endurance. All right, Don, you can go ahead now if you want. Read the first quote by Haruki. As a parent, who knows that one? Always trying to keep your children from from suffering and making bad choices. No. But what can we do? What do we do with our children when they do make those bad choices? Empathise. That's it. 
you be with them, isn't it? Just be with them, isn't it? That's yeah. Oh, they will push you away. They, they do. You, you had teenagers, but sounds. Like. <laughs> Go on. Di, read another one for us. Yeah. Oh, I like that. Tolkien from The Hobbit. Even dragons have their ending. Endure, because the dragons that are chasing you will eventually have their end. And we did that a few months ago, didn't we? That when Michael cast down the dragon. Yes. Go on, uh, Ken, there. Read for us uh, Tabitha Suzuma. Suzuma. Isn't that fascinating? Being together. Yes? Did I? Oh, yes. Go and read it for us out loud. Hakim. This too shall pass. Yes, by Hakim Sanai. This too shall pass. Who's ever said that? Yes. That's a good way to get through. You know, sometimes you're in the middle of something and you go, this too will pass. Isn't it? Yeah. Keep breathing. <laughs> this too will pass. So go back to this. Thank you for the one we missed. Go back to that quote by Tabitha. Being together we harm no one, but being apart, we extinguish ourselves, we harm ourselves. What's that saying? What's she getting at there, do you think? It's all about me, being apart. misery, resentment, etc. That's that's very deep, Gay. Here I was thinking over here, uh, what is it? Is it together we stand, divided we are conquered, and together we stand. How's that saying? Together we stand, divided we conquer. That's it, yeah. That was going through my head. But you took it to a much better place. You took it internally where it's like, if I'm all focused on me, 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 then I don't get the strength of the whole. But when you're focusing on other people, there's that strength of the whole. That's what you were getting at, right? Yeah. Yes, that's right. Yeah. Something about conquering in there. Do you remember the quote? Many versions. And was it Napoleon or someone who said that? I think. Together we stand, divided we are. Was it? Probably Romans, yeah. Probably was. Been around for a while, that one. Okay, I need someone who's really happy to read this long one by President Whitney. Go on, Bev, read it out for us. It's beautiful. And when he gets to the end, think of Our Father Who Art in the Heavens and Jerusalem Above, the Mother of Us All. Think of that. The Minister's to our education, to the development of such qualities as patience, faith, fortitude and humility. All that we suffer and all that we endure, especially when we endure it patiently, builds up our characters, purifies our hearts, expands our souls and makes us more tender and charitable, more worthy to be called the children of God. And it is through sorrow and suffering, toil and tribulation that we gain the education that we come here to acquire and which will make us more like our father and mother in heaven? Yeah. Okay. Jerusalem of the mother of us all. Yes. Isn't that amazing words? You don't hear that very often today from leaders, do you? These are incredible words here. So let's go to the scriptural quote. Revelation 2, 1 and 3. And we're going to read how endurance in this passage... Endurance equals spiritual combats. Now think of it this way. Right? When it comes to spiritual matters, he who fights wins. Isn't it? If you've never fought spiritually, then you've just been a slave to whatever is coming at you. Whatever vice is coming at you. It says here, unto the angel of the church of Ephesus write, I know your works and your labor and your endurance and that you cannot bear the evil and have tried them that say they are apostles and are not and have found them liars and 
has borne and has endured and for my name's sake has labored and has not fainted. Jesus said, come to me he who labors and is heavy laden. And the word labor is a word we use for birth as well. Isn't it? Birthing. Look at this next verse. Endurance equals birthing. James 1.13. When tempted, no one should say that God is tempting me. For God cannot be tempted by evil, nor does he tempt anyone. But each person is tempted when they are dragged away by their own evil desires and enticed. Then after desire has conceived, it gives birth to sin. Sin, when it is full grown, is a terrible teenager that gives birth to death. Don't be deceived, my brothers and sisters. Every good gift and perfect gift comes from above, coming down from the Father of heavenly lights, who does not change like shifting shadow. He chooses to give us birth through the word of truth that we might be a kind of first fruits of all. You have this beautiful contrast here, haven't you? You've got our selfish desires that gives birth to what? Sin. Sin is just acting out of selfishness. Sin gives birth to death. On the other hand, when we endure and we resist selfish pleasures, selfish desires, the truth in us gives birth to the fruits of the Spirit, and then the fruits of the Spirit gives birth to eternal life. Isn't that beautiful? Two there in that one passage. Endurance equals birth, a laboring. You know, I, I, my wife had seven births and one miscarriage. And the one thing that always stuck out to me, we did home births, that meant I was there. And the one thing that really stood out to me every time she went into labor, there'd be that hesitation like, is this, is this going to be a false start? And one or two of those along the road. And then another day or two, she started going to labor. But when she really went into labor, at first she'd go, I'm not ready. I'm not ready. Stop. Can you stop it? Can you stop such an event? And we were put on earth to become something much more than we are. And when that time of birth comes, you want to be ready. Because you cannot stop it. You need endurance see you through. And Romans 5, 3 and 4, not only that, but we rejoice in our sufferings, knowing that suffering produces endurance, and endurance produces character, and character produces hope. And I'm going to push the issue again here. The suffering that God wants us to endure is the suffering of righteousness. He doesn't want to suffer us to suffer because of our foolishness, our stupidity, our dumb choices, isn't it? God doesn't want us to suffer like that. He wants us to suffer. What is suffering for righteousness sake? What do you think suffering for righteousness sake is? The slings and arrows. The slings and arrows. Telling the truth or being truthful or whatever and so on. Are you saying if I go out there, the teenager of society is going to get upset at me when I tell them the truth? And the politicians. And the politicians. And the protesters and the yeah, there is a suffering from telling people the truth. Absolutely, yes. That's one. There's one other two. Go on, Ian. What's the other form of suffering that we are called to... When the truth is manifesting in us, what are we called to do? Spiritual combats. Yeah. That's it? That's it? That's all right. <laughs> to remain humble was a hard one. To remain humble? It's like, I'm right, but I'm right. Well, when you really want something that's wrong and you resist it, is there not a suffering in that? Is there not a suffering in really wanting something but saying, no, it's not good for me? That third piece of chocolate cake is not... Of course, we're not really talking about physical temptations. We're talking about the temptation to be the ego, to be selfish, to try and be the god of your own universe instead of letting that higher power lead you, isn't it? That's the real temptation. Yeah. Now let's read on the back here. Let's go to the card actually, because I, I liked this passage I put on the back so much, I put it on the card as well. Do you have cards? Oh, do we have any extra cards? Look at that. Make sure you get another one later. 
Let's let's read it from the card and then good on you, Ben. Let's let's read it from the card and jump over to the back of the order of service to get the last sentence. There's a really good sentence on the back. On the card it says here, endurance, the power to continue without yielding even when suffering. Did someone give you something else? Yeah, but you gave him your card. <laughs> Who's got endurance? Everyone's got endurance. Who hasn't got endurance? What's happened? There's a few on the back that got. So there's another endurance. Did you get an endurance? Yeah, yeah. 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 Fear not, we will endure even though you don't have the right card. Okay, close your eyes if you don't have the card and I'll bring them next week or next time. Yep, I've got a heap of them at home. All right, close your eyes and listen. Endurance, the power to continue without yielding even when suffering. James 1, 12 and 18, blessed is the one who perseveres under trial. Combat, spiritual combat, trial. Because having stood the test, that person will receive the crown of life that the Lord has promised to those who love him. And let's look at this amazing passage here from Apocalypse Revealed. Because thou hast kept the word of my endurance, this signifies that they have fought against evil and have rejected falsity. That the word of endurance signifies spiritual combat, which is called temptation, is plain from what follows. Quote, I also will keep you from the hour of temptation which shall be, or in some translations it says, which shall come upon the whole world. Who wants to be spared from the hour of temptation that's coming upon the whole world? Every hand goes up. Yes, yes, every hand goes up. Who wants to? Let's try this again. Who wants to be spared from the temptation that's coming upon the whole world? The hour of temptation coming upon the whole world. Yes, every hand. Now let's read what the writings say. That means... For he who is tempted in the world is not tempted after death. Now, let, isn't that a good news? Now, let me read that word again and remove the word tempted and put tempered in there. Tempered in the fire. Because that's what we're really talking about here. For he who is tempered while in the world will not need tempering after death. Isn't that amazing? There's something beautiful about doing the work now. The body offers a buffering zone. Your mind is so powerful. Swinburg says that what you think and what you desire will manifest in the world of spirits. And if you're going through tempering in the world of spirits, it's going to be a lot difficult, a lot more difficult than going through it in the buffer zone of the body. This earthly life is a gift. Every second, every moment, cherish it. The test that you go through now will save you from tests then, which will be so much more dramatic in the spirit. Your mind will be unleashed. Let's hope it's still not got the red dragon riding on it. Or the great whore, or any of those kind of archetypes that want to haunt us. Yes? Yes. Now, if you look at the back of the order of service, hey, I could have pointed you all to the order of service anyway. <laughs> Let's read that second last and the last sentence. I will also keep you from the hour of temptation which shall be. For he who is tempted in the world is not tempted after death. Spiritual combat, which is temptation, is called the word of the Lord's endurance or patience because in temptations... The Lord fights for man, and he fights by means of the truth of his word. So what does that mean? If you're going through spiritual battles, and you've endured, and you've taken the time to build truth into your life, what does that mean when you come to a battle? What does that mean? It's actually, if you sort of look at what's in the world, Yep. 
But you're not fail. Not if the Lord's fighting. If the Lord be for you, who can be against you? The truth will come in and remind you that if you just keep enduring, you won't fail. Is that? Wow, that's beautiful. So when you go into a battle, who wants one gun or who wants lots of guns? Okay, sorry. <laughs> I'm so used to dealing with a generation of kids that plays games online. <laughs> okay. When you're playing a metaphoric game online and you're going against a, a digital enemy with guns, do you want one gun and a few, amp, a few bullets or do you want lots of guns and lots of bullets? You want as much ammunition as you can, don't you? And the more you've endured, the more you've endured, the more you've been able to build the truth into your life when the fights come. Just open back up the order of service again there. In the middle there, I didn't read it. But let's read it in the right in the middle on page two. Swinburne here is, this is right from Apocalypse Revealed. He's quoting what having faith and endurance really means. Right there in the middle there. He says, to have faith and endurance signifies having the truth, veritas, and the endeavor to procure and teach it. The endeavor to procure the truth and teach it. There's you're going out in the public and telling people in the public square and then picking up rocks and throwing them at you. <laughs> you if you have endurance, you have procured the truth and you are able to demonstrate it to people by your life. Teach it. You're able to demonstrate it. So endurance, when it comes to spiritual battle, the more endurance you have, the more you can fight. In other words, the more you've taken time to procure the truth in your life, gather it up, store it up like you're doing today, I promise you your next battle will be better because you are here today. Isn't it? From the truths that we hear. Is that good news? Okay, turn to the back. This month, the very bottom, this month, look for opportunities to practice endurance. Every time you are struggling and want to run from the situation, Pause and remember that the Lord is fighting for you. Let him bring you through the battle into the lasting victory rather than fleeing into failure. Okay? When you want to run under the pressure, it means you haven't gained what you needed to learn there and grow. But when the Lord beats the battle for you, it's a permanent victory. It's a permanent victory. Okay, let's read the meditation together and we'll close because we wanted to have a short service today. That'll give us time for a cup of tea. Let's read the meditation together. Starting with difficulties. Difficulties invigorate my faith and determination. I rise up to the challenge of life and resist failure. I learn from my adversities and discover new wisdom. I give time and patience to my friendships and love relationships. I am confident of the Lord's power to see me through the journey of life. I am thankful, Lord, for your gift of endurance. It builds my character and leads me forth in your path, peace and rest. So let's... Open the word and say a benediction. And today I'd like to leave the word open. I'll close it before I leave. I'd like to leave it open for the age again. In a, in a, in a way of saying, let the Lord be in our midst as we have our general meeting. Lord, we lift this gift to you. It is a day that you have made. May we cherish it each moment. Remember you and enjoy your presence. Let's say the benediction. The Lord bless you. The Lord keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you his everlasting.
Let's have a cup of tea. Then we'll go into the Asian.